is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, the world without end. Amen. O oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those who most need in thy mercy. Queen of Peace, pray for us. In the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Warm greeting to all of you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So, says, I would like to try to explain to you everything that has been happening here in Medjugorje. Maybe the best way would be to start from the beginning. To try to explain how everything started. Then the most important messages. And then you go on and ask whatever you may be interested in. So we will go 32 years backward. June the 24th, San John the Baptist feast day, the day when nobody worked in the village. Ivanka and me, two girls who were 14 and 15 years old, wanted to be alone for a while. We went outside of the village and we took a walk along the foot of what we call the apparition hill today. We were talking about normal things. In one moment, Ivanka told me, I think that Our Lady is on the hill. Just like that. I didn't look. For me, that was impossible. Without even turning to look, Mirena says, I replied to Ivanka, yeah, Our Lady has nothing else to do and she would come to two of us. So I left her standing there and I intended to go back to the village. But as I was reaching the first houses of the village, deep within myself I felt a cold that I simply had to go back. When I came back, I saw Ivanka on the same spot. And she told me, look now, please. And among the rocks and bushes, I was able to see a woman in a long dress holding infant baby in her arms. Everything was very strange. Because nobody climbed the hills. There was not even this path that we have today that was made by the pilgrim's feet. And then now to imagine a woman in such a long dress with infant baby in the arms to go to that kind of hill. I was just gazing. And in the same moment, I felt all possible emotions at the same time. Fear, beauty, misunderstanding. I didn't know if I were alive or dead. What prevailed within me was simply to run away. And I ran away back home. And I said to my grandma that I think that I saw Our Lady. <coughs> she told me, you'd better take the rosary, go to your room and pray to dear God. And let Our Lady be where she is. I didn't have strength to, to debate with her because I wanted to be alone in prayer because only in that way I was able to have peace. The next day, like every other day before, I was helping my uncles. I did not have a chance to see other visionaries. But around the same time when I saw Our Lady the day before, I felt the same cold within myself. And I said to my uncles that I have to go back to the base of the hill, there was something calling me. They came along with me in order to see what was happening. Reaching the base of the hill, practically half of the village was already there. Because with every visionary, somebody from the family came along. 
And we sell Our Lady on the same spot. But this time she did not have baby in her arms. So that day, June the 25th, was in fact the first time, first day when we approached Our Lady. She presented herself to us. She said, my children, be not afraid. I am the Queen of Peace. And that is how our daily apparition started. Very shortly, we were having apparitions on the hill. Because as I already told you, that was time of ex-Yugoslavia communism, and immediately police came with the dogs and they occupied the hills. And whoever would try to climb the hill would end up in prison. But those first days, Our Lady presented a few miracles. So that everybody from the village was able to see something. For example, in the middle of the sky, you could see the word Mir, which means peace, written. Villagers were able to see that. Then cross on the cross hill would disappear, and Our Lady dressed in white would appear. They saw that as well. Now there were two miraculous physical healings. So villagers seeing all of this and knowing us as children, they believed us and they were helping us. Therefore, every night we would have apparition on a different spot. So that no one would know ahead of time where we would be. Such daily apparitions I had all the way until the Christmas of 1982. That is when I received the 10th secret. And Our Lady asked for me to choose a priest to whom I will reveal the secrets. I am supposed to say to that priest 10 days in advance what will happen and where. We will spend 7 days in prayer and fasting. And three days ahead of time, he is supposed to say to everybody. That priest doesn't have a right to choose whether to say or not to say. Because if he accepts that mission, he has to do it according to God's will. But Our Lady always says, do not talk about secrets. Pray. Because one who feels me as mother and God as father, that person has no fear of anything. Our Lady says, only those who have not come to know the love of God yet, those people have fear. Our Lady said, what I started in Fatima, I will accomplish, finish in Medjugorje. My heart will triumph. And that if our Heavenly Mother's heart will triumph, then simply what to fear. When that apparition on Christmas 1982 happened, Our Lady said to me that I was not to have her daily apparitions anymore. But that it would be only once a year, on every March the 18th, as long as I live. But she also said that I will have some extraordinary apparitions. And those apparitions started on August the 2nd, 1987, and still have been lasting on every second of the month. And those apparitions are also prayer for unbelievers. But Our Lady never uses that term, unbeliever. Because when you say that someone is unbeliever, you judge that person, you give your judgment. <coughs> but Our Lady never judges. <coughs> Referring to them, she always says, those who have not come to know the love of God yet. <coughs> and Our Lady is asking our help. <coughs> when Our Lady says, our help, she doesn't mean only six visionaries. <coughs> but help of all those people who feel her as mother. 
Because our lady says that we are capable to change unbelievers. But only with our prayers and our own example. Our Lady asks from us to put in our daily prayers in the first place the prayers for unbelievers. Because Our Lady says, when you pray for them, in fact you pray for yourselves and for your own future. Beside prayer, Our Lady is asking our example. She doesn't ask from us to preach. She doesn't want us to walk around and to talk. She would like from us to talk with our own life. So that unbelievers can see God and God's love within ourselves. Meaning, I says, I would kindly ask of you to accept this in the most serious way. Because if you were able just once to see the tears on Our Lady's face because of unbelievers, I'm so certain that you would pray from the bottom of your heart. Because Our Lady says, this time is time of decisions. And that we who claim to be the children of God have great responsibility. When Our Lady asks from us to pray for unbelievers, she desires that we do it in her way. And the way I understood it would mean first to feel love for them. To feel them as our own brothers and sisters who were not lucky enough as we were to come to know the love of God. And only once we feel like that we will be able to pray for them. We should never judge or criticize. We should simply love them and pray for them. I know for them our own example. Because every one of us has an unbeliever. Maybe in our home, in our neighborhood, at our working place. And we should ask ourselves, can that person see God and God's love within ourselves? When I said that Our Lady would not like from us to talk, I didn't mean that we should keep quiet all the time. But first of all, our life should be speaking. And if we pray, then we will be able to understand and know when is the right time to say something. Because it will be Jesus who will be speaking to us then. But if we do not pray, our words are empty. And we're doing only opposite. Let me give you a cute example that happened to me. You notice that our church in Medjugorje is always packed. In the evening when I came to the evening mass, I intended to sit because I have a problem with my back. And I noticed there was a little bit of space in one bench. And around me were pilgrims from Italy. When I sat down, they all started shouting at me. <laughs> Stand up, that is our bench. We were the first to come. <laughs> all of them together as one. I stood up and kept quiet. And then a woman who was a member of that group came in the meantime. She recognized me. And she told them that I was one of the visionaries. After that, they offered me the whole bench. <laughs> but why am I saying this to you? Imagine if I were an unbeliever who was invited by Our Lady to come here to Medjugorje. And who was for the very first time entering into a Catholic church. And inside are those who claim to know the love of God. And they welcome me in such a way. Would I ever enter into that Catholic church? And whose responsibility would that be? Well, that is what Our Lady desires from us. To be an example. So that it can be seen in us, in our own life, and not in our words. 
Because every one of us can learn to speak nicely. But our little desires that our life speaks. In these apparitions in Medjugorje, Our Lady gave to every one of us visionaries a mission to pray for. My mission is to pray for unbelievers. Vitska and Jakob pray for the sick. Even for the youth and for the priest. Maria for souls in purgatory. And Ivan for families. But Our Lady's most important message that she constantly repeats is the Holy Mass. But not only on Sunday. When we were children, at the beginning of the apparitions, Our Lady said to us, If you have to choose between seeing me in the apparition or attending the Holy Mass, you should always choose to attend the Holy Mass. Because during the Holy Mass, my Son is with you. In all these years of the apparitions, Our Lady never said, Pray, and I will give you. She always says, pray so that I can pray to my son for you. Jesus is always in the first place. Many of pilgrims, when they come to Medjugorje, they believe that we visionaries are privileged. They think it's enough to say to us because God accepts our prayers better than the prayers of other people. But that way of thinking is wrong. Because when it comes to Our Lady as Mother, she simply doesn't have privileged children. For her, we are all just her children that she has been choosing for different missions. She chose six of us in order to give the messages. But she chose every one of you. Because in one of her messages on January the 2nd, Our Lady said words in which she's directly addressing you. She said, My dear children, I invited you. Open your heart, allow me to enter. To be able to make you become my apostles. It means that we all have the same importance for our mother. There are no those who God listens to more or less. We're all just His children on earth. I learned that at the very beginning of the apparitions. Maybe you notice that I mentioned my uncles, my grandma. Because I'm the only one out of six visionaries who was not born and who did not grow up here in Medjugorje. My parents are from here. But after they got married, they went to live in Sarajevo. So I grew up with them. But I was coming here constantly because my entire family was here. Because when the Parisians started, communists wanted to destroy everything. And they brought me back to Sarajevo. I didn't want it. Because here, situation was much different. Five of them were here together. And then everybody here is Croatian. <clears throat> Even police. And Croats are Catholics. And in Sarajevo, Muslims are communists. And I was alone with my parents and my brother. We, nobody was allowed to come to us. We were not allowed to go anywhere. Every single morning police would come to our home, turn everything upside down and they would take me with them. And I was only 15. But that is not like in America when you can say, I want my social work and my attorney, my son. <laughs> I was alone with them. You have no idea what communist interrogations are like. And I thought, Our Lady will help me. 
However, when I would receive a permission, Our Lady would tell me exactly the same words as she would say to them here. Nothing about me and my situation. I don't even have to tell you how abandoned and left alone I felt. But after some time, I understood. For God, there are no privileged ones. If you're facing hard time, you have a cross. Take the rosary and pray. And God will be with you. When I understood that, it was easier. And then here in Medjugorje, many times after the apparition, I was able to see to see people who would come to me saying that they were healed or they felt the love of God. But many of those people I didn't even know. And I did not ask for them. But they had an open heart. And they asked Heavenly Mother to ask her son for them. I'm saying this in order to explain to you that when you need mother, you do not need visionaries. You just need an open heart. Because Our Lady always repeats, open your heart and I will be with you. So it all just depends on us how much we truly desire our mother to be with us. If anybody is privileged for our Heavenly Mother, if you refer to Our Lady's every second of the month apparitions messages, you will notice that we can speak about priests. Because Our Lady never said what they should do. But she always talks about what we should do for them. She says, they don't need you to judge and criticize them. They need your love and your prayers. Because God will judge them the way they were as priests. But God will judge you the way you treated your priests. Our Lady said, if you lose respect for your priest, you will lose it for church and at the end for dear God as well. <laughs> the same way during the sec every second of the month apparitions, when she gives us her blessing, Our Lady always says, I'm giving you my motherly blessing. But the greatest blessing that you can receive on earth is the blessing coming from your priest. When they bless you, it is my son himself blessing you. <laughs> she also said, do not forget to pray for your shepherds. Their priestly hands are blessed by my son. That is why I'm kindly asking of you, when you go back to your parishes, Show to others what our respect or our attitude towards our priest should be. And if your priest is not doing the way you think he should do, do not walk around judging him. Take the rosary and pray to dear God for him. Because that will be the way to help him. And not through judging. Because in this world that we are living in, there is People judge too much, and there is so little of love. And Our Lady desires that we, we may be recognized through love, and not to take in our hands what only dear God is supposed to do. Only He may judge. I am sorry that I cannot share with you more about what Our Lady has been preparing us for all these years, but I may tell you one thing. We have this time, our time that we are living in, and we have the time of the triumph of Our Lady's heart. Between these two times we have a bridge, and that bridge are our priests. That is why, especially recently, Our Lady insists that we pray for them. 
because that bridge has to be strong enough for every one of us to be able to cross it over. Because Our Lady says, alongside priest, I will triumph. It means that without our priest, there is not even the triumph of Our Lady's heart. Our Lady asks our Mass to pray in our families. Our Lady says, there is nothing that can unite the family like when you pray together. And Our Lady says, parents have great responsibility in front of their children. Because parents are those who are supposed to put the seeds of faith in their children. Because children do only what they see in their home. We cannot talk to our children about the importance of the Holy Mass if they don't see that the Holy Mass is in the first place for us. We cannot talk to them about the importance of prayer if they don't see us praying. I always give a cute example from my own family. When my older daughter Maria was only two years old, I did not speak to her about apparitions. I thought she was too little, she can't understand that. But one day while she was playing with her friend in the room, I was watching over. But then I heard this other girl saying to my daughter, you know, my mom drives a car. And as I do not drive a car, you know, Maria remained quiet for a moment. And then she replied and said, a big deal, my mom talks to Our Lady every day. <laughs> <laughs> so without even saying a word, she understood. But she was able to see what was happening in our home. That is why it is important that children may see that for their father and mother, God is in the first place, and then everything else. Our Lady asks for us to fast on Wednesdays and Fridays on bread and water. It, it all brings me to laugh when I speak about this message of Our Lady. <laughs> In order to justify myself. In a certain way, I grew up with Our Lady. But when you grow up with her, you don't look at this world in the same way. For example, for me, there are no nations. For example, when someone probably says, I'm an American. I love, you know. I know how meaningless that is in the eyes of God. Because for him, only his children on earth exist. Because one day when we face God, he will not ask me if I was good as a Croatian or you as American. He will ask how much love did we have. But it is so interesting still to see, you know, how different nations react to the same message, let's, let's say, about the message of fasting. For example, there is a very typical one, typical American question. Can we have at least coffee in the morning? <laughs> and I say, yeah, why not? But make sure you do it early enough before Our Lady wakes up to see you. <laughs> well, this will be a typical American question. <laughs> Italian. They simply can't accept of this message of Our Lady. Because after that they have a million questions. How long is Friday or Wednesday? <laughs> As if I may shorten it or do something about it. 
Can we have just white pasta? <laughs> Can we have a bread with olive oil? <laughs> One day a professional athlete told me, you know, I think you did, you did not understand well. I think our lady asked of you to fast, not all of us. But if you never fasted twice a week so far, if you never prayed the entire rosary every day so far, I would like to recommend you to do the way Our Lady did with us. The first thing she asked for us to pray on a daily basis was Creed and then seven sets of Our Father, Hail Mary and Glory Be. Then sometime after she added one part of the rosary daily into fast on Friday. Then she asked for second part of the rosary daily, then the third part of the rosary daily, and to fast on Wednesday. Our Lady went step by step. And that can be an example to all of us. Because when pilgrims here tell me, when I come back home, I will fast twice a week, I will pray entire rosary every day, I say to that pilgrim, please don't say because you won't make it. But promise something that you know that you will be able to do. And walk with Our Lady. She will help you when you fall. Because the only thing that she desires is to give us her son. We could possess anything that exists in this world. But if we do not have peace, then we simply have nothing. And the only true peace is peace given by Jesus Christ. And that is what our Heavenly Mother desires for her children. To have true peace. To have Jesus. Our Lady asks for us to go to Holy Confession at least once a month. Our Lady says, there is no man on earth who doesn't have a need of a monthly confession. And as a sister, I would like to recommend you. Since you did already so much for our Heavenly Mother, you left your homes, your families, you took a long journey, and all of that for her love. Do even that step. Go to confession. Because only pure heart knows how to receive the gifts. And especially because on Sunday during the apparition we'll all be together in front of our Heavenly Mother. It would be nice to have pure hearts. Our Lady asks for us to bring back the Bible in our families. When Our Lady gives me a message, she doesn't explain that message to me. She gives it to me the same way as I give it to you. For example, these every second of the month apparitions, the messages. Those of you who have been following it, you know that they are very long. And I can remember that message, word by word, the way Our Lady said, only within a few minutes after the apparition. That's why I always have Mickey next to me. I dictate him the message. Because later on when I go to my room to pray, I can only say what she spoke about. But later I cannot repeat word by word. And I also need a message in a written form to be able to understand through my prayer what God desires to tell me. So when Our Lady says, bring back the Bible, I believe that we all have a Bible in our family. 
But our lady desires a simple thing. To open it every day. To read a few sentences, doesn't matter how much. But that the Bible may live in our family. And not to have it, and then to be able to say, yes, we do have it, but we never touch it. And our lady says, in Bible are hidden all the answers to all the questions we have. Well, this will be what I always have to say, what would be the most important. Now it's your turn and ask whatever you may be interested in. Most likely I forgot many of those things, but you ask. That is why we have gathered. Just raise your hand when you have a question. Yes? Mariana, thanks for talking with us this morning. You are Appreciate it. <laughs> um, my question is about prayer. Um, how, how can we pray better? Is it better to pray outwardly, inwardly? Um, when we reflect on praying the rosary, do we think about Mary? Do we think about Jesus? Do we think about the mystery? <laughs> I'm very happy once such a young person asks such a question. The answer would be simple. Try to pray with heart. That is what our lady desires. I understood it in this way. That the prayer with the heart is, when I pray, for example, if I say, our Father, that I feel within my heart that God is my Father. Which means that every word that comes out of my mouth would go through my heart first. I would like to recommend you not to judge your prayer. Don't waste your time. Because you can always pray better. None of us can say, I pray perfectly well. Or I'm a perfect person. I personally have fear of such people. We're all just on our way to holiness. How much did we succeed, dear God will judge. The way I understood what we need from our Heavenly Mother, we should always try to be better. To pray better, to fast better, to be better in our uh, relation with people. With her help. You just surrender to all that is hands. It's so simple. And be not afraid. You're very important for her and she loves you. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, in your opinion, uh, which one is better, uh, structured prayer such as the Our Father or conversation prayer? Both. Okay. <laughs> For me, both is great. Okay. Our Lady requires rosary. But if we pray more, or if we have conversation, she won't mind, definitely. <laughs> we have to joke. Because <laughs> if you want to be a witness of God's love, you have to joke and smile. You have to see on your face, smile, joy of God's love. I always mention this young boy, 16 year old. He's from Milan, from Italy. And he told me like this I believe in God. I pray every day. But I do not go to church. And then, as a mother, I tried to explain to him a little. That he, that he can't go without church, without altar, without Jesus. With sadness in his eyes, he looked at me. He said, you know, but when I enter in the church, 
But when I see all those sad and depressed faces, I immediately go out. That is what we have to reflect on for a while. What do the young people see in us? Do they see the joy of God and hope? Or they see depression and sadness? That is why I always like to joke and to smile. Turn everything into a joke. As much as it's possible. Because you see, none of us will live forever. Today we are, tomorrow who knows? With God. The important thing is how you spend your time. Because I believe that Heavenly Father will ask us only one question. How much love did you have? Because if you have love, if you love people, then you cannot kill, offend, steal, cheat. Because you love people. You see Jesus in that. I think, personally, I think that this is the only thing that God will ask us. But that is not what Our Lady said. <laughs> Yes? Can you address uh, preparation for the end times to put to rest people's um, false ideas of what they need to do? What does end of the times or world mean? I can die tomorrow. And then my end of the world will be tomorrow. <laughs> and the way I personally think, it's important that I, that I'm ready this very moment to come before God. And not to think about what will happen. God's will will be done. And I have to be ready for that. Today, tomorrow, no one knows that. Do you have the history of Our Lady written down, or is that one of the other visionaries? More or less, I do have, Mariana says. That's on the, the parchment that no one can read? That's, no, that's not about that. No. You're referring to secrets? No, I, I thought that the history was... Oh, I know. Oh, Lady's life is just on a normal, in normal notebook, a normal paper. But it's not released now yet. It's not published. It's not released now. Will it be released? Will it be released? It will be given to everybody who is interested in our Lady's life. Not like a book. <laughs> or some commercial something. No, it will be just given to pilgrims just like this. Yes? Thanks. I was wondering, it's like a three part question. It was um, like what, how you really compare what Mary's personality is like, and also um, like what makes her like, brings her the most joy that she sees in her children, and what like makes her the saddest, particularly those that are. Well, Our Lady's personality, Our Lady is Mother. I think when I say that, that I said everything. Because her love, her care, her care, she's never angry or nervous. Always with a lot of love and pain. I think that would be a motherly. That only she can do that. That is why she's mother of God. On one occasion, I tried to be like Our Lady. I tried. <laughs> and I said to my children, put your room in order. With love. Patience, like our lady does. <laughs> <laughs> and nothing happened. <laughs> I repeated it in such a way three times. <laughs> nothing happened. <laughs> and then when I yelled, <laughs> and 
everything was okay. <laughs> that is why I said there is only one Our Lady. <laughs> and the second question. What makes Our Lady happiest is when she sees Jesus in the heart of her children. And she's saddest when she sees those who did not come to know the love of God yet. Because she, as mother, knows what we are supposed to expect. And she wants all of her children on the right way. And she cannot be happy as long as there is even one unbelief. Because Our Lady desires to bring us all to Jesus in order to be happy. That is why never on the second of the month when I have apparitions I saw her happy. She's always sad or decisive or determined. Because when people ask you what was Our Lady like? I always say just look at your inner side. What are you like? And then that's what Our Lady was like. Uh, does our, um, has Our Lady appeared to you alone when you didn't know about, I mean, when there were mass amount of people around? Our Lady always comes at the right time, but I know that she's going to come. There's no sudden apparitions. Because I always prepare with prayer and fasting. Because Our Lady doesn't come because of me. I'm just a transmitter. Okay. How do we recognize the love of God in our everyday life? Look at this morning. We all woke up. <laughs> Thanks be to God, we're all together, we're sitting. Isn't that the love of God? In all these little things over the day, I always recognize God. For me, it is God's love to see you here. And think about how much sacrifice you had to do you know, in order to be here. Isn't that the love of God? I see dear God in everything. I think I asked you a coffee question last time I was here. I mean again. You're not the only one. <laughs> well, one of our, our priests, um, I asked him about does he fast, and he says he does sun up to sun down. And so then that brought up the question, is it you know, is it when you wake up to when you go to sleep? Is it midnight? When when is, when can you sigh? Or... And I'm Italian too. Are you sure you have no Italian blood? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I didn't speak last time. I think that our lady's clear. <laughs> Wednesday and Friday. I we know how long is Wednesday, how long is Friday. <laughs> it ends at midnight. Some of my friends do like this. They wait for midnight with a table with all the food served on it. <laughs> and they're waiting like this, watching the, the clock pass. <laughs> and as soon as midnight rains, they all start to eat. <laughs> Um, sometimes when uh, I pray, uh, prayers are really dry. I'm not really into it. Uh, what can you do for that? You're not the only one. Many people say like that. Do not uh, lose your hope. My personal advice would be like, put the rosary aside for a while and talk with your mother with Our Lady, and tell her why is that so? What is it that, that is burning you, that, that doesn't allow you to open? 
Everything you have within you, give to her. And try to pray. And don't waste your time judging your prayer. I will repeat it again. You just pray. It is important to pray. Because if man would like to live, you have to eat. Good, bad, medium. <laughs> but you have to eat. But in order to have a relation with God, we have to talk with Him. And prayer is our conversation with God. Because if you lose prayer, you lose God, you lose conversation with Him. Yes? How do we know what God is asking of each one of us? If you wish, you know it so well. Because God is always very clear. Whenever I decide, desire to decide something, I pray. And when I feel peace within myself, it means that I made the right decision. So prayer is answer to everything. Can you describe for the, the children especially what Our Lady looks like when she appears to you and about the three angels? That what Our Lady looks, looks like? Think. About the angels? Mediana says, I never saw an angel. Oh, she doesn't see an angel. I can try to describe Our Lady. That's the hardest. She's a little taller than me. I assume so. Because I'm always on my knees. And Our Lady is always like a foot and a half above the ground. She always has gray dress and white veil. Except on Christmas and Easter when her dress gets kind of golden color. But when I say gray or golden color, those are most alike to our gray and golden, but those are not our gray and golden. She has black hair and it's long. Because you can see it below the veil on the forehead on the right hand side and behind, which means it's long. She has blue eyes and she's wonderful. I didn't tell you anything. Because it is impossible to describe the beauty that is coming out of her. As children at that time, we asked her a childish question. We said, how is it possible that you are so beautiful? She smiled and she said, I'm beautiful because I love. And she said, my children, if you want to be that beautiful, then love. At that time, visionary Janko was only nine years old. So when Our Lady left, he said to the rest of us visionaries, I think that she wasn't saying the truth. <laughs> we all kind of attacked him, like, how do you dare to say that Our Lady is not saying the truth? He said, yes, but look at us visionaries. Some of us can love until the end of our lives, but will never be as beautiful as she says. <laughs> Because he did not understand what kind of beauty our lady spoke. Even today he doesn't understand anything. Very honest is we lost hope about it. Yes. You all have the same secrets? I mean you can ask about them time. Well, Mirena says we never talk about secrets. Secrets are secrets. We, among ourselves, visionaries, only talk about the missions that we have. <clears throat> In learning to uh, know the Our Lady, I sometimes get confused. I know the Lord is the one that we always ask of, but to ask through Our Lady. What is the best way to do that? 
the way you wish. Oh, then he never said you have to pray to me. She just desires to show us easier way. <clears throat> For example, on earth. If you look at a family. But it's somehow that always children ask mother. And that she knows how to deal with father. <laughs> Using simple words, I would explain it that way. But if you have a relation directly with Jesus, don't worry. Because that is what Our Lady desires. To have a relation with Jesus. What advice or encouragement would you give to parents of young children on how to raise their children? What advice to parents who have young children how to raise their children? For me personally, the answer to that question was always love. That they may feel that they are loved. And to see that God is in the first place in the family. And then everything else after. Because when I show them with my own example, then I can demand from them some things. That's the way I did. Yes? What about the, those who have children who have left their faith? If we planted seeds, usually when they're grown up, they, they leave. They want to try a different way. They don't want to do it the way their parents told them. But with the roots that we planted in them, they will come back. I always say to parents, don't judge, criticize, or force your children. Love them. Pray for them. And put them in Our Lady's arms. And then they will come back. Does Our Lady speak about why so many people have fallen away? Why so many people have fallen away? Did Our Lady speak about that? Those are all unbelievers who were never believers. I'm personally, I use the term maybe decisive about it or determined. I'm, I would be like the right way. I can't explain it well, but whether you are a believer or you're not a believer. There's no something among or between. For example, one man told me, he said, I've always believed in God, I went to church, and God took my wife away from me. I don't want that God anymore. I don't go to church, I don't pray. And I said to him, I'm sorry that I have to tell you. But you never believed in God. So you believe in God when it fits you? And when God gives you a cross? When He asks you to lean His cross on you? You don't want it. It means that you do not know the love of God. The symbol of our faith is cross. If you don't have it today, you will have it. Be not afraid. It is important how you carry it with God's help. I always say, if you give me that cross, just don't leave me alone with that. I can't do it without you. In your private conversations with Mary, as mothers, has she has she helped to correct your your choices? Does she mention, uh, "I'd like you to work on this virtue and, and inspire you to grow in, in virtue"? 
Uh, does she get that specific with you? No, never. Our Lady never said to me anything about me. Seeing like every one of you, I also have to pray and then through prayer to try to understand. I'm like a telephone. She's talking and I'm transmitting. And I also have to do the same as all of you. Yes. You talk back? Yeah. To talk back? Yes, yeah, you speak to her. During the apparition, you mean? Yes. Yeah. Well, Our Lady is the one who leads our conversation, not me. Even if I could, let's say, let's say see her for a hundred years, I always know that she's Mother of God, and I'm just one who is walking on this earth. For example, she doesn't have to tell me, you may or you may not ask me this. I f you feel it within yourself. But it is always Our Lady who leads our conversation. Um, practically speaking, how does, um, what does your prayer life look like while, like, as a mother raising a family? Like, what like does Nidana's prayer life looks like, a mother raising a family? As a mother. Yeah. yeah. What does Nidana's prayer life look like? Can you repeat the question? Like, like practically how you organize your, your daily life so that you can fit in quiet time for prayer. Yes, it was I wake up early before anybody else because I desire to start the day with God. Him and me together alone. Those are the most precious moments. That is my rest for my soul. When I start the day with Him, then somehow everything turns to be easy during the day. And then I do everything that other women do. That's why I say when people say that I'm privileged, I think that privileged one do not wash iron or clean the house. <laughs> All of that and then again during the day I'm looking for a moment when I can be alone with my God. And then the evening. I go early to my room, I withdraw in order to be able to finish my day with a prayer. Yes? Uh, so you said read the Bible daily. Uh, are there any specific books that you recommend or that Our Lady recommends that you read from the Bible? Our Lady said Bible. Shouldn't it say precisely anything else? When I'm angry, I, look, I read the Old Covenant. <laughs> when I'm not angry, then I read the New Covenant. <laughs> just a joke, just a joke. <laughs> the whole time I have been talking to you how I am equally the same as every one of you in front of her. Just open your heart and tell her everything you have. She's listening to you because you are important to her. Let me just give you an example. One time when I was walking back from the Blue Cross after the apparition, I was supposed to say something to someone from Our Lady. But I did not know what and to whom. All that is strange. And walking back home from the Blue Cross, there was thousands of people. And then suddenly a girl came in front of me, and I knew she was the one. And I said to her, I'm supposed to tell you something, but I do not know what. And then she replied, but I know. And she started crying and she set out. 
That means every one of you is important to our lady. She invited every one of you by name to come. She needs apostles. So everything you wish from her, as from mother, just say to her, you don't need me, just an open heart. Thank you. Miss Mother? You've had a chance to visit heaven and see heaven? See heaven? Uh, Mirana says, I hope that I will see heaven one day. <laughs> Vitska and Yakov had a vision of heaven. That was at the very beginning of the apparition. And that day police took us visionaries. Only Vitska and Yakov succeeded to stay. So when Our Lady appeared, she came only to two of them. And she said, now I will take you with me. They thought they were going to die because they go with Our Lady. <coughs> but then Yakov said, dear Our Lady, take Vitska, she has seven brothers and sisters, I'm the only one in the family. <laughs> Already smiled and she said, No, I just desire to show you that heaven, purgatory, and hell do exist. Yanko did like every man would do. Can you share how her personality has um, been transformed and changed throughout her relationship with our lady? Mitana's personality? Has it changed? over the course of time, being with our lady. We were raised in faith. Not only visionaries, but the entire village. In every family, every evening before the dinner, we pray rosary. God was in the first place. You could feel it in the air, especially under communism where you need to choose. Because if you choose God, then you become enemy of the state. Here, everybody decided for God. If it meant, if you want to have the roads paved, you, you want to have a telephone, a storage system, you have to do it all on your own. Because you do not exist for the state. But still, everybody here decided for God. And I grew up in such environment. They always told us that if you need to die for God, then you will live forever. But if you say no to God, then you'll die forever. For example, here, many people simply disappeared over the night. Police would take them. We know they were killed. But we have no idea where they were buried. But nobody never said, I don't want that God, I'm afraid. That's the way I grew up. I'll let you just bring it all much closer. That God is love, that He's with us, that She's mother. Somehow all of that became more familiar. Because before I always thought God is in heaven. He was waiting for us to make a mistake in order to punish us. But our lady has been teaching completely different. That God is love. Always ready to forgive her cho his children. Things like that. It's 9.30, Mass is at 10, so we'll have to definitely finish. We can finish with one Hail Mary. And as we are so privileged to have a priest with us, we can ask him for a blessing. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Queen of Peace, pray for us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Almighty God bless you and keep you the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.